I'm Jay from the Cubs Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of me reacting to these true story animations. I have a few interesting ones for today's episode that I think you guys are gonna like. If you guys cool with that, you down with that? Everybody get ready and buckle up, cause here we go! First video of today's episode is called I Don't Have a Face and if my voice is gone or it sounds a little bit different, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit under the weather today. But let's see why this girl has no face. Hi, my name is Ruby, but maybe it's not even mine anymore. Anyway, what, what difference does it make? Of course that's still your name. Just because you don't have a face doesn't mean I that's not your my name. Present, what? What future, <laughs> and past, oh, girl? In the blink of an eye. At least, that's what I thought just a couple of months ago. From the moment I was born, I lived a fairy tale life, and my mum tried to raise me to become a princess one day. Lucky you. I had everything. Popularity, charm, and a bad temper. A pr Wait, she had a bad temper. That's like a quality. She's proud of having a bad temper. Proven formula for success. Even though I was difficult, I was beautiful at the same time. And, and it she's conceited. Without a doubt, great. That I had a successful a great career as a model ahead of me. But one evening, everything changed. All right, here we go. On the Already eve of my the graduation, juicy details. my boyfriend Chris picked me up from the house in his brand new Porsche. Chris was driving us down a road that was as straight as an arrow. At the same time, a drunk electrician, Harry, was oh, no. driving like a maniac at 100 miles an hour with his headlights turned off. He was heading straight for us. His pickup literally smeared the Porsche. Oh! Immediately, our car caught fire. Chris Bro, that's and three the dead bodies. The pickup truck both died on the spot. They both died on minute, the spot. I laid face down in the melting wreckage of the car. I was for half a minute. How did people get to her that fast? Taken to the hospital, you along with part of the dashboard melted to my face. I had to undergo seven surgeries in the next seventy-two hours. Yo, this is the Doctors real deal. Doctors separated the plastic from my muscles. In some spaces, they even managed to preserve skin scraps. Saved one eye. Separated my lips, which were melted, closed. The damn. bridge of my nose was collected like a I mean, that's not funny, but I'm just pieces. like, damn, my that's serious. Arms and legs were packed tightly in a cast. In part, they were even able to save my hearing, but I permanently lost the ability to speak. Wait, they saved your hearing? Doesn't hearing come from inside? Hearing doesn't come from the outside. Like, no amount of car melting could have disrupted your hearing. You know what? What do I know? I'm not a hearing expert. When I finally woke up three days after the accident... But I'm right, though, right? Could feel was Tell me I'm right, guys. Everywhere. Tell me I'm not as dumb as a rock. I was so many painkillers that I don't... I might be a little bit as dumb as a rock. Was, a little bit. What I was doing here and who all these people were crying at my bed. I will never forget the moment when I looked into a mirror for the first time since the accident. It happened on the fourth month of my stay at the hospital when the nurse removed the bandages from my head. I swear I saw two extra wrinkles appear in my mother's youthful Let face. Let me see that ugly the ass face. The mirror was round oh! and the reflection of my face looked like a burnt pancake with holes for the eyes, mouth and nostrils. During my entire stay in the hospital, That's not no that one bad. spoke a word about It was about like somebody just put their skin marks Everyone all over her face. Me, saying, everything will be fine or you will get through this. But I could not even imagine that my face That's had messed turned up, into though. a that really scary sucks. skinless skull. I could not believe this freaky creature in the reflection, in fact, was me, yelling and waving my arms. I kicked everyone out of the wall. Oh yeah, her mouth is so scream, shut, so she can't talk all that bullshit no more. Pain. Pounding a glass vase with the mirror, I imagined breaking the face of the person who stole my life and shattered it to pieces. The fairy tale was over. The princess had That's become a monster. That's how fast life can come at you guys. Time, it was forever. You could be a bratty Probably little five-year-old princess and then the bam, the ugly pancake face. Disappeared. When they released me from the hospital, I became a ghost of our country mansion. I did not want to accept any of the realities of my new life or to see anyone from the outside world. Neither did I want to be seen by anyone. All I could do was just wish to stay that same old Ruby whose face Like I know I, I stay roasting like a 4th of July barbecue, sometimes. but goddamn, this is actually pretty sad. I mean, I'm not going to cry over it, but just the reality of it. Like what if this happened to you? What them? if this happened One to me? One time, my parents made an appointment with a psychotherapist. A specialist just for mutilated people like me. Dr. Sally was his name. Yeah, another narrow-minded old man, I thought, hearing his name. However, I agreed to meet him, but under one condition. Our meeting must be held in the dark. He asked questions, and I answered them. Yes, silence. No. Okay, you know what? Before we continue, guys, 
I was just thinking about how sad this would be if this happened to like me or, you know, think about it. If it happened to you guys, just put yourself in this girl's shoes. And I actually have like a little story. Maybe you guys could relate to it. So recently I've had like a little allergic reaction which caused me to break out on my face like this. And usually I don't break out this hard. So mentally I'm kind of just like, man, like when I have to edit the videos, I'm like, man, my face really broke out. And yeah, it's slowly getting better because before it was a lot worse. But I was just like looking at myself and I'm like, man, I just want to go back to having like a clear face like from like a month ago, like two months ago. But it's slowly healing and I can't even imagine having like a permanent face like that. Like how mentally draining, how mentally disturbing it might be. So not even just like the physical toll it took on her for this to happen to her, but like the mental aspect of it. That's huge because like you don't even want to look at yourself you don't even want to interact with people your confidence is probably shattered and you just don't see the light at the end of the tunnel so i don't know why i feel for the story right now i actually feel like this is legit true like this is not true this is actually true i really feel like it is no clap the first 10 questions were typical life affirming slogans as if i read them from a piece of paper after each of them i clapped and thought uh why did i agree to this However, the next question was straight to the point. Dr. Sally asked, Ruby, do you think your life is over? I wanted to clap, but I couldn't. Then he asked, do you think that there is not a single chance to get back even a small part of your previous life? Are you sure that no one can ever understand your pain? All these questions were followed by complete silence. If I wanted to find the answers to these questions, said Dr. Sally, I needed to turn on the lights. When I turned on the lights, I saw a man whose face was lacking a nose and that looked like it was sewn what? together from many pieces what a, a twist. scar on top of a scar. What I a twist! Dr. Sally is the only one I could trust. He understood me. We met every week. It seemed like he read my thoughts and I just kept silent and listened. He also talked about his family and children and about the fact that he refused to do a face transplant surgery because with a new face, he thought he would not be able to help people like me. My meetings That's with true, Dr. I guess. Sally breathed new life into me. I mean, me. man, he's I really committed to his work then. Not to give up. Not wanting surgery just for the, the job? I made to him. Get Tomorrow the bag, baby. I see you. Surgery, and this will be my first step towards a new life. Who knows what kind of person I will become with my new face. I'm 19, However, but still sucking really a pacifier? After all, Should we check that out? My old I mean, the girl with no face is still talking, but shh. I'm 19, but Please I'm still sucking a pacifier? All right, you know what? Let's do it. All right, so let's find out why this girl's 19 and still sucking on a pacifier like that one 16-year-old boy was sucking on his mom's fat titties. Hello, my name is Daisy. Do you have a bad habit? Something you reach for instinctively and can't control during times of stress? No. I suck on a pacifier, but what had happened in my childhood that I couldn't live without something to suck on, even at the age of 19? There are Jesus three of us in Christ. my family, me, my mom, and I have an older brother, Colin. That's some Wincest right us. here. He Why are you touching your mom like that? Was little and always took care of me because our dad had left us when we were little. My mom said he found another woman. I don't know the details, although I asked often enough when I was younger. I don't I know the details, younger. but I'm still my gossiping with my mom. My worries without me pestering her. To provide for us, she had to work a lot. There was no money for a psychologist for me. We lived in poverty. I later began working at a fast food restaurant just to help my mother pay hey, the bills. Hey, welcome to McDonald's. Can I take your order? The viable solution for my situation. But I actually figured out though. how to turn my bad habits Guys, into this a girl's benefit. 19, she still it's sucked that thing. To talk about, but truthfully, the pacifier helped me make a good I mean, bit of money. I mean, nothing's ever wrong with sucking how? that thing. You know those chat rooms for online she's not dating? The right well, thing. I somehow I mean, got talking wrong to this thing, one guy. But the pacifier, I, I don't know if it's the right thing. About my what am I even habit? talking about? Let me Suddenly, shut up. He asked me to Skype him so that I could show him how I suck my dummy. At first, his request shocked me, and then I felt a little disgusted. I mean, there's a fetish for everything, right? Joke, like, people like people it was who like poops on chests. That I was like a model. He was ready to pay, just like you would a model, a pretty penny. So, we Skyped. I didn't do anything nasty. I just sucked on a pacifier and looked directly at the camera. I didn't even see this guy's face. I don't even know if you guys should not be seeing that right now or what. Like, she literally went on live camera and started sucking that thing. You know what? Why do I keep saying sucking that thing? How many times have I said the words sucking that thing? I just need to just he play this. He transferred me a good deal of money and eventually he ended the call. 
He contacted me the next day, and I did it again a day later. Except this time, he asked me to put hey, on children's money, clothes you know? and even to I'm wear a bib. I'm never gonna question he how people get their money. Suck, suck it! On camera. Suck so, it! Every time I did, money poured into my yeah, account. Yeah, just, just now, suck it! Now I had two it. options. The money ahead coming of me. in, just suck Either it! Either I could continue to suck hey, on a pacifier, pacifier on camera. Hey, give me a pacifier! I'm a grown ass man. I'll suck it! Or I would it. need to seek professional help for my bad habit. Help, yeah. I couldn't decide help on which course of action to begin. Help me get a pacifier in my mouth. So I decided to do both at the same. Time. Suck that thing all in night. city, there was a famous you know, clinic. Expect. My doctor, Mr. Campbell, was a respectable care, man of about 40 with I don't a bunch care. of diplomas. He began to question me, and I told him <laughs> absolutely so everything. I'm so sorry I'm like this, everybody. how it was making me money. He said that the cause of my addiction to the pacifiers was most likely an injury early in my life. No, you know what? You suck in the pacifier stems from long, deep daddy issues because you just said that daddy walked out on you and you were just like... When I started talking about the web chats, he said I have the right to make money however it suits me. Yep. His words really reassured me. Anybody Finally, who that sucks on a pacifier over me, the age of 18, I began to go to Mr. get your money! More and get more your often. money! Once I'm not mad at you, I promise! A hypnosis session. In the session, he put me under, and then I began to remember. Someone was dragging me by the hand. I felt very unpleasant sensations. Who is this hobo Hagrid looking dude? Rude. They felt strange to me and very strong. I awoke screaming and began to suck on my pacifier Where did to she calm get that? down. After they just had the one session, lying around the psychiatrist's office? Emotionally and physically, and I hurried home. That evening, my mother and I waited for Colin to arrive. At dinner, I began to tell my mother and brother about my sessions and the hypnosis. It became unexpectedly quiet. I thought my mum was about to ask where the money for my sessions came from, <laughs> but no. Instead, my brother spoke. I think I know what you remembered in your session. He what said, is it, fuckboy? Slowly. My brother Colin then told a story. This had happened when he was nine and I was four years old. Our dad was still living with us then, but mum knew that he had mustache. another woman on the side. That's not your real Mom dad. went for a walk with us in the Look park. Look how fake that thing as is. as we were walking, someone called my dad. Someone called, literally. It said someone on the phone. He began you to can't quarrel make this up. with the person on the phone. Wait for me, he shouted into the phone and told my brother and I to sit on a bed. I gotta go see then someone. You guys sit there. Our I'll come back in 18 left years. Us in a park. We were scared, like blind kittens thrown into a bucket of water. We sat for a couple of minutes, but we couldn't stand it, and we ran off to look for our father. At some point, Colin stopped holding my hand. When he realized, he looked around, but I was gone. How do you he realize you're not holding somebody else's hand, buck Just as bitch? suddenly as he had left, my father returned. Together, he and Colin ran around the park searching for me. They found me oh, next to a tramp. I was crying. That really is and Hobo Hagrid. Was screaming and gripping my arm painfully. My father and brother got the tramp off me, and we went home. Nice. My father and they threw him in the trash can. Not to tell father of the year. Happened. Why did but he walk Colin out on them? Told my mother He's a cool dad. And this was the last straw. Mum filed for a divorce the next day. After the incident at the park, I hadn't spoken for a I week. I told you. Only silently daddy sucked issues. on a pacifier. Sucking that thing from daddy issues. It turns out for all those years, my brother had felt terribly guilty for what had happened. He couldn't have thought that the event would be the catalyst of me, a 19-year-old still pathologically sucking on a dummy. But I couldn't stop. My bizarre habit brought me not only great comfort, but also good money. The sessions with yeah. Dr. Campbell continued, you know, although I asked him to Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do! He did not say he would. Instead, he tried to convince me to accept that this was who I was. This guy has like a Dorito-looking nose. was a part of my identity. I began to become suspicious that our meetings were odd and that he had an ulterior motive for constantly suggesting hypnosis. What? One day, during a session, I mentioned my conversation with my brother. Dr. Campbell said something chilling. But you're not doing anything wrong. Carry on sitting in a grey jumpsuit with a bow in your hair, sucking on your dummy. It's causing no harm. It was like a bolt of lightning, striking me with realisation. I had never told him what I wore on the webcam. He must have been one of my clients. I was in shock. He oh! had a wife and a son my age. Yo! I looked at him and didn't see a doctor this anymore. It's giving me goosebumps. I don't know why Naturally, it's giving me goosebumps because this story is just like weird, but it's giving me goosebumps. Questions, which they cross-referenced with what the doctor had said to the police as well. When they examined the CCTV footage What's he doing in the third office, one? What's he doing in the third one? Cool, God. Open your eyes. Everything became clear. It turned out that when he watched my web show, he... 
you know, satisfied himself. <laughs> he would persuade patients to go under hypnosis and <laughs> oh, I feel to dirty. pacifiers for him to I feel secretly dirtier than that guy. What was I thinking when I agreed to do this for money? In a way, I was his bad habit. I'm totally disgusted by all of I'm this disgusted. and stopped doing any web shows. But I still suck on my pacifier. I just can't stop. Do you have any bad hey, habits that hey, prevent get it, girl. you from I mean, like, if you still life? suck that thing, you, you still suck that thing. I've never been normal, but no one knew until I was below. caught. I'd like to Man, are we just going to go deep in the rabbit hole of all these recommended videos? Yes, we are. All right, guys, last video we're going to check out is called I've Never Been Normal, But No One Knew Until I Was Caught. Hi, my name is Justin, and I'm 16 years old. Hey, Justin, is that's 16 years old. Is say to you all the time? Does it infuriate you? My parents have a favorite word. It's... I hate even saying the word. It's normal. That's the I favorite word? I my dad word? said I was normal when I was born. How is that anybody's favorite Everything word? Everything was normal. And when I had to do something, I had to do it normally. But you know what? I hate that word. Why would parents and want I you to be normal? destroyed my father's parents idea should want of you to what be great, normal was Greater than themselves. Forever. I parents loved suck. April Fool's. Parents suck my butt. It was a chance to turn everything upside down and have nothing to be normal. I decided to prank my little sister, Ellie, by sneaking into her room and hiding her underwear. What could she do on Monday morning when she couldn't find a single pair of underpants or a bra? Wow, you're an asshole. On Monday morning, while Ellie was in the shower, I snuck into her room and began to throw her underwear into my backpack. Suddenly, I had the urge to try her underwear on. Uh? I don't know why. I just what? did. What? Felt strange, but not in a bad way. The underwear was not only beautiful, but it felt so soft and comfortable. The bra supported me easily. Ellie and I have the same chest type. Flat. <laughs> but then I heard steps and my father's voice. I barely managed to pull my pants and t-shirt over the pink Dude. underwear in time before my father came in. <laughs> he had those what are you doing in on. your sister's room? He asked me. I lied and said that I had wanted to use her hairdryer. Normal boys don't use a hairdryer. Get out of her room. You'll Who be late for school. Like that? Somebody check that dad. School, he might be a robot. I swear to God, he might be an alien. And don't don't do honest, that. Don't x-ray vision really and see it. those pink panties on this guy. It felt so much more comfortable on, no. to sit. And my hands involuntarily kept reaching in to feel the lace. <laughs> Somewhere deep down, that little normal version of me kept saying, this isn't normal. Hey, Maybe but it again, feels just right. Wearing girls' underwear makes you a freak. Sometimes, you know... But I Even if it's him. meant for somebody else, I it might just amazing. feel right. You can't find it. Since Did you see then, those guys' eyes? Did you see his eyes? I want to have a look like this, guys. I, I want to look like that. Maybe Since I should put then, on a bra and panties. I have worn her underwear constantly. Of course, Ellie noticed they were missing and correctly guessed that it was me who had taken them. But she couldn't prove anything. She complained to Dad, but he told her, Justin is a normal boy. He doesn't need your underwear. This was probably the first time he was on my side. I began to walk home from school just so I could stare in the shop windows and look at panties. People just probably bombs, think he's a huge pervert. They became my dream. But I just couldn't walk in and buy right? them. Right? Like if I was looking at All that, people would be come like, to an end sooner or later. There was a girl I liked, Stacy, who worked for the school newspaper, but her brother Rob hated me. He was the captain of the school football team and thought I wasn't good enough for his little sister. Not only that, but their dad was our principal, Mr. Jarks. Mr. I was Jerks? doomed to failure with Stacy. Wow. What a name. When I had gym class, I would change my clothes only once all the other boys had gone. He's still wearing it? I was it? changing, standing oh, there in my sister's clean it pink once panties, in a while, would you? when a boy called Rob burst in. Oh, he no. He had a smartphone in his hand, Bro. and before I could pull my gym shorts, With the pants down, too? Normally, that I thing all up in his pale ass cheeks? The picture, but Rob, uh. well, Rob was a huge dude. <laughs> As I stood there, for what felt like he turned Bro, I would have whooped his Rob ass in his my panties. In I don't care. If someone took a picture of me in pink panties and a bra, I'm swinging. I'm punching air. I don't care. You're going to do my homework and wash my clothes, or this ends up around the school. Capiche? He said. Damn, this dude said capiche. When a guy says capiche, he's either A, in an Italian mob, or two, he's a douchebag that means business. I just nodded. What else could I do? He told me to hand wash his shirts only, and then left. From that day on, I was his slave. 
Rob would rip into me, calling me gay or a transvestite. But I wasn't either of those. I was sure I was a straight boy. I just loved lingerie. Is that so strange? I was I mean, running out of ideas. It's comfortable. A few days you can't later, fight though, what feels I had right. an idea. That's the motto. Remember Stacy, Rob's sister? She could delete the photo for me. I found Stacy in the school's computer lab, and with tears in my eyes, I asked her to delete the photo. She promised me she would do it that weekend. But when I came to school on Monday, I was met by a oh. chorus of laughter from the other students. The whole school knew. Stacy had sucks. got a hold of the photo that weekend, but rather than delete it, she turned it into the cover piece of the school newspaper. Wow. I was humiliated in you front of the entire school. You think you know a school. person. Hey, Brad. Rob yelled at me, laughing the hardest. I ran I home. didn't think that they were going to say that in this video. Ruined. I mean, you know what? The administration I'm not even going to let that I word play in the video. My mom I just dad. censored it. That's the power of editing. They came from work early and interrogated me. This isn't normal, son. Are you gay? Do you need a sex change? At one point, they started to blame themselves as failed parents. I stayed home for two days, and my parents didn't force me to go to school. They didn't want to talk to me. They were so embarrassed and ashamed. But that changed when the doorbell rang on the second day. Mr. Jarks, our principal, Mr. was at Jerks the door, or Jarks. and he asked to speak with me in private. You know, either way... I was ready to hear that I was expelled from school, but what he said shocked me. A silk thong and a monomore push-up bra from the Javanetti collection, if I'm not mistaken. You have excellent taste, young man, he said. Don't tell me he's going to take off his clothes and he has the same exact undergarments Mr. Jark sat down and told me a story about a boy who loved to wear lingerie. He didn't bother anyone, but was still mocked. and Now I don't believe this story. But I believed it at first, but now school, I don't believe this story. Graduated with honors from college, started a family, and then became a teacher and eventually a principal. <sighs> yeah. It was me, Justin. Okay, yeah. He said with a reassuring smile. Oh, I smell that smell. Mr. Jarks told me he knew that the photo was the what work of Rob and Stacy. I smell that Stacey, smell during certain and therefore, videos. Therefore, he needed to teach them a lesson. That's so even weird. Even if it cost him his principalship. I don't want my son and daughter to become like... bullies, he said sadly. Like an animal. I saw poo. a photo of Mr. Jarks in women's underwear on the front page of our school's oh Facebook page. Underneath was written. Yeah, I definitely don't believe this. Normality is a vague concept. As expected, there was backlash against Mr. Jarks. The school governors wanted to dismiss him, but Mr. Jarks raised the issue to the county council, arguing to dismiss him was to infringe upon his freedom of expression and to encourage bullying at the school. This guy knows his it stuff. It also brought to the table a Gotta key question. Gotta give him a round of applause. What does it mean to be normal? He garnered a lot of support across the state with education and yeah. civil rights experts Mr. defending Jock. his methods Woo. of educating his students. The attitude of my classmates changed. They no longer laughed at me. At home, there was an attitude change as well. Oh, yeah? My parents Tell me about started it. to talk to me again. The picture of my principal had had a powerful effect on my father. Perhaps, he said, wearing women's clothes is normal. My mom, too, was impressed with the I picture guess. and kept hinting that I should become a teacher. I guess that's the moral of the story. You might think that during all this, I mean, I the, a better thing right. would be like but the parents just accepted him wrong. and didn't say it's normal. They're just like, you know what, whatever, whatever you want to do, now. we can so do So I've it. started to buy my own, although I still tell people that you know what, dead. whatever. I'm so relieved that we live in a time when a word like normal doesn't control our lives. What norms does society force on you? Okay, you okay. That video was all right. It seemed true up until the whole principal part. If that's true, you know, that's actually badass because he risked his whole career just so this kid could feel like he was a part of something okay. Like something normal. I didn't want to say normal, but okay, we're going to say normal. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for this episode of reacting to these true story animations. If you guys are enjoying this series and want more of this in the future, make sure you guys give this video one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is that dude.